You're listening to Faceless Brew, a Magic the Gathering podcast for the Spike Rogues. Each week, we design new decks for tournament play, and then we put our creations through the test so we can share our findings on the air. What worked? What didn't? And what can be improved for the following weeks? On today's episode, our beloved CEO, Cave Dan, is on vacation, so Moral takes his old brewing pal, Davius Minimus, down a memory lane trip, as they discuss what they love about magic and brewing itself, so you will see a lot of beautiful brews, and hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Faithless Brewing Podcast. Tonight, as you might notice, our lovely CEO is not the one making the intro, and that's because our lovely Cave Dan has taken a vacation, which means you're stuck with a one-hour monologue from your favorite host, myself. Well, not really. I would never desire that upon anyone. However, I'm shown by a lovely individual that a lot of you might have probably heard about. I'm shown by the mighty Davius Minimus. Davius, how is it going? Yeah, I'm good, mate. And you? I'm doing quite well, just... God, I just had to fire it up. Dan just said, more, I gotta leave. Find somebody to show you. And I was like, I have just the people to show me on this beautiful weekend. <laughs> Good stuff. So, Debius Minimus, the guy behind Animatic Incarnation, the guy behind Tameshi, likely the guy behind some other brews that went and told never to see the light of day. <laughs> no, some of them have seen the light of day, um, <laughs> but only briefly. Some of them only briefly, but some of them have taken the time in the spotlight for a lot more time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The good ones. <laughs> the good ones, of course. Yeah, there's plenty of bad ones. And those are the ones we just go ahead and hide under the mattress, never to see the light exactly, of day. Exactly. Right? We just push them there softly after a few leaks that didn't work as we expected. And just... But we never know which are the good ones at first. Well... <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's no real way to know, is there, until you just, like, play lots of games and then hope that they go good. So, yeah. You fire a few leaks and just pray, pray the best happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And sometimes, like, I've had brews that went 5-0 on the very first league and you think, wow, I have the best deck ever. And then play the second league <laughs> and it's like 0-5 oh, and, and then again and again and again. And you're like, oh, God. And, uh, yeah. It was just a, like, a coincidence. Yeah, I've... I can uh, discuss it later on, but I, I had a deck that did exactly that. It 5 0 in my first league, and it was super sweet. And then I couldn't do better than 2-3. And then every now and again, probably like straight after this podcast, I'll be like, oh, but maybe it is good. And I'll give it another go and I'll light another 10 ticks on fire and then uh, put it back <laughs> in the bin again. And uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty terrible deck, but somehow it 5 0 and it's like the most fun I've had building a deck. So um, <laughs> I, I always get tempted to play again, but uh, um, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm going to love hearing about it in a few minutes once we get back exactly into that. Yes. Discussing some of our most beautiful failures. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> So, before we get started on the in beautiful interview with this man, let me just make the tiniest bit of housekeeping, letting everyone know why they should likely show our Patreon if you like and showing, supporting the show, because it's what helps us keep going, what helps us, well, get beautiful people like Davius here and, and the next guest during the, during the week, and it grants you access to the Discord, where you will find an army of crazy men just constantly brewing. You're going to find every sort of deck list, from brilliant ideas to things that... Please, you don't want to see. Trust me. Some brews are better left than the third. But it's a beautiful place and it's one of the biggest benefits about joining us alongside voting for the monthly project. This month we're working on Shiny Fei. Davius, I'm going to ask you about that later. As we constantly keep working on Shiny Fei, trying to find the best pioneer slash modern build for the beautiful cat and dog maker. I forgot the English word for dog. Yeah, I um, <laughs> I I eyed up Jenny Fay because uh, tokens are sweet, but uh, I've not I've not managed to do anything cool just yet. But the tokens always tempt us. Yeah. So with that being said, also remember you can find us on YouTube where we're constantly uploading videos from our leagues. And besides that, thanks so much for being here and hope you enjoy the episode. So, Davius, 
Davius Minimus. Why don't you tell us about the, uh, how you started in Magic? How long ago? Oof. Tell us a bit about your Magic career. Oh, okay. Um, well, it started, weirdly enough, um, at my grandma's house. Um, my friends and I used to meet there after school, and um, one of them had got into playing the game, showed us how to play, and that was 20 four years ago something like that so quite a while um and that was very much uh kitchen table magic at its finest and it was um you know i was at school didn't have a lot of money so it was it was about trying to throw together the coolest deck you could with no pennies to do it um and that sort of carried on for quite a lot of years and you spend a bit more money as you do when you play magic and then uh, eventually everyone goes their separate ways in life and um, I just couldn't really stop playing the game so I'm, <laughs> I'm sort of solely a, a Magic Online player now, I haven't played in paper for four years um, but it's just like, it's how I get my fix you know, it's such a good game so uh, I'm still here I mean, it's a beautiful game and a funny thing here is comparing stuff to the age Mordor was born and you have been playing the game for longer than I have been born yeah, well, um, which is <laughs> quite a lot of years. Yeah, yeah, it is a long time. Um, when we first started playing, it was almost like self regulated, you know, like we net decking wasn't really a thing. I mean, it was a little bit, but it wasn't, wasn't really. And we would just open packs and make decks and order cards online. And, um, if someone made a deck that was just like too stupidly good, we'd just be like, okay, let's ban that card now. And that's how we did it, you know, it worked. <laughs> um, we're a bit more proactive than Wizards of the Coast, actually. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we, um, we self-regulated and it was good fun. You know, you could, you could make any deck you wanted and play multiplayer games, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was, it was good fun. The beautiful begins of kitchen table magic. We, I think everyone knows that the best type of magic is the kitchen tables part. If, after that, it's all down. It's all downhill, right? It's then modern. It's then modern. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I love modern, but I remember when I started playing, it was like sort of similar. I was meeting with an ex, with an ex-girlfriend and a friend with her par- with his partner. And he was like, so I just started playing this game and he just threw the cards on the table. And I had been playing my own TCGs and the computer like Hearthstone and such for a while. And I was just like instantly hooked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the beauty, the beauty of Magic just caught me. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an addictive game. The thing is, same same thing as you. All the friends I started with have just forgotten about the game, and I'm just here. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm the same, really. Yeah. Um, there's always one that sticks while the rest have like forgotten about the game. There's one that just cannot let go. Yeah, just hang, hanging on for dear life. <laughs> it's what keeps us sane. It's what keeps us sane. Yeah, so, something along those lines. So, when did the brewing start? Were you like uh, a brewer from the beginning? Yeah. Were you like mostly just playing, or did you just develop that? I know, just pretty much straight away. Like, um, I don't know. There's something deep and meaningful behind all of this that I'm too stupid to know about. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's something along the lines of um, I just I don't want to win easy. I want I want to have a bit of flair, a bit of style. I want it to be hard work. And uh, uh, that's, that's almost more important than winning. Um, I, I want to do it. I want to do it my way. So that was always, um, always the case for me. I, I, my first modern event that I went to, I registered Ice Conceptor with like Silence and Remand. And then I wrote a really chunky form on a Planeswalkers. And <laughs> I didn't beat any of the unfair decks, but I beat some of the fair ones and I had a good time. And, People started gathering around the table to see what the hell I was doing, and they were like, going, "What the? What is going on here? Like, what? Why have you registered these cards?" I was like, oh, they just looked fun, so I put them together, and I, that's always been how I wanted to, how I wanted to play. Um, it just takes some time to really land on a uh, a style that suits, and then once I did, that that's kind of screwed me over because I just can't stop registering Birds of Paradise now. So, so um, <laughs> you know, I was, I was fine for quite a long time, but uh, it's quite difficult to register Birds of Paradise today, but I, I keep trying. Yeah, Birds over Topias for all is a lost battle for birds. Uh, yeah. At least in the last couple of years, months. Yeah, M- Modern Horizons 2 really screwed over Birds of Paradise. Uh, so the, the poor little guy. 
just um, solitude, prismatic ending, um, like unholy heat with you know the Ragavan decks are just everywhere. Um, Fury isn't a good card when you're running lots of you know because you don't you don't play Birds of Paradise and not run more creatures. You know, like everything gets tagged by at the same time. I think also a huge part is the presence of Ragavan means everyone has removal because people who are willing to let you survive with a birds, but people are not willing to let a Ragavan survive, so they are gonna have a turn one removal. Right. You are not gonna escape that. And the decks that don't, like, um don't have removal not for care. birds, they play Living End and wipe the entire board on turn three, you know, like <laughs> it's just uh it's it's really difficult. Um but you know, we like a challenge, so Okay. But I, I love discussing that because the reason you and I brew is almost completely opposite. Oh, really? Like, I don't care about being it my way or the hard way. I just want to play a deck that's my style of deck. If that deck already exists, I don't mind. But if it doesn't, I'm going to make it. Right. So that's why my brewing got stifled when Four Color, ma- when Four Color became meta because... This is what I was brewing on. It just became good. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm like kind of the opposite. I I kind of live for five O's. I don't really have the time to play modern challenges and things like that. And once I get a five O or maybe two or three, I kind of I kind of lose interest in a deck and I move on to the next one. <laughs> um, it's it's just too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, I, I've, I've done it. I've done what I had set out to do, and now I need to move on, try something else stupid. So, um, <laughs> but to be fair, I'm sure people have figured this out by now, or if you haven't. But we're going to be discussing Tameshi, and that is one deck that um, kept my interest for quite a long time. I have something like ten trophies with that now, and yeah, um, yeah, it's, um, it's kept my kept my interest for much longer than many of my other decks have so that's good i think you have that's likely one of your two or three best works but cutting it a bit back to the beginning back to when i first met debuts in the deep and troublesome place that it's the nip discord yes where debuts just wasn't willing to play a good deck for once and he just started trying to add random cards to it Every single week you would see, okay, guys, this is Niv, but we have a Helix combo. Yeah, so that was the first one, wasn't it? It was Spellweaver Helix. Um, yes. That was my first one. So <laughs> my plan there was to bring to light for Dark Petition, and then Dark Petition would add three mana, and then I would get Spellweaver Helix, play it with the three mana, and remove a Dark Petition and a Raven's Crime. And then I could Raven's Crime all the lands out of my deck, netting two mana a cycle. And then with the last Raven's Crime slash Dark Petition trigger, search up a, a win con and kill people. And I was having loads of fun messing around with that. And I thought, oh, do you know what? It might fit in a Niv Mizzet shell. So I came and discussed it in the Niv Mizzet discard. Um, I then played a little bit of Niv Miz, but not for long. And then I was going to stream. And I think this is, I think this is how this goes. I was going to stream. And I'd posted on the Niv Discord saying I'm about to stream something. And then just like about five seconds later, I was like, actually, I don't want to play what I was going to do. I'm going to play Enigmatic Incarnation in Modern. And Mod and one of the guy was like, what? <laughs> that, that can't be right. We need to see a list. And um, we shared a list and then me and Mod got to work. And yeah, quite a few months later, we, we fivered. I think you got the first one. I think our work has always been like that. You are the creative mind and I'm the tuner. So you had this really, un- like when when Inventing Incarnation got spoiled, I remember telling my ex-boss that also played Magic something like, this card is going to make it someday because it has the makings of greatness. Yes. It just lacks the shell. And when you say that, I was like, okay, did this guy find something or is he just insane? I mean, he is insane. He was playing Spillweaver Helix, <laughs> but he, is he like... <laughs> The good sort of insane, or just the madman sort of insane? And then you send this really sketchy original concept, but it had the shell of what we eventually transformed into enigmatic, the Rallier Luru Soman package. Yes. And it, and it, and it, was, it was close, but it, I just, by myself, I could never get across the line, you know? Like, it was um, more eyes on a project is always better. Oh, it's always better. And, and that's why quite often you'll find me on Reddit and... 
uh, Discord channels and all this kind of just like going, okay, guys, I have a brew. I think it has some potential. I've got it to like a, a bunch of three twos, a bunch of four ones. Can can you help me get it across the line? And um, with Animatic Incarnation in particular, there was just me and Mod. Like that was that was it. Like it was just me and you, and we did all the work and we jammed a ton of games. <laughs> and um, you know, I think the first breakthrough was lithoform blight that you suggested and it's not even in the deck yeah that was but... the first build yeah we were playing five color and i was like we need a two mana proactive spell and lithoform blight for some reason we were playing four seas for blight yeah we we're playing four of them because sometimes we could enchant our own lands to fix our mana whenever we <laughs> whenever we locked ourselves out with maggots of the moon in our five exactly. color deck but then also we could put it on a Tron land and upset Tron. So, um, and there was a lot of Tron at that moment. Yeah, but that that was like that was like a step that, like it was like two steps forward, one step back. So it was in the right direction. And and what it it that led us to think about spreading seas, which we hadn't done before. And that was, I think, spreading seas wouldn't have come about without Lithoform. Blight. Yeah, exactly. And and because of that, I think that's what actually made us five zero. I think I think that's what got us across the line in the end. Spreading seas became all of a sudden one of the best cards in the deck, and it really was. And we just never even pictured it at first until we came up into something. Yeah. Like until until the blight, and then we said, "Why are we playing blight? Let's just play something better." Yeah, and then we did, <laughs> and then we were the deck got better for some weird reason. <laughs> 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 So who'd have thought? Hey, good cards and good make make decks better, but hey ho. Um, Play the good cards, win games. Who would have said so? No, the Farm Blight was actually good, but it made us properly a five color deck. Like we were like yeah. four color and a brain maggot for quite a while, but the Farm made us like proper five color, and so cutting it out actually helped. Um, but yeah, like and that was before Triumphs. Yeah, that, we started playing it before Triumphs. I think the first build is from... Yeah. Oof. When did we have the first Enigmatic build? I remember you sent the list and I was playing with a friend on Discord and I was like... And I got a 3-2 in my first league, but it was one of those 3-2s that was a good 3-2. You know the good 3-2s. Yes. The ones that were like... This was barely a 3-2. I just lost two games to randomness. The deck worked. When it, and when it worked, I won. Yeah. The good three twos, not the I managed to somehow pull a three two out of thin air. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. So I got like a good three two and I was like, wait, wait, this works. Whenever I got an enigmatic, I work this works. Yeah, that was that was always my finding with that deck was that if you resolved enigmatic incarnation and got like one trigger out of it, you won the game every time. Like so that told me straight away that, that the card is good. It with the you know, with the right creatures and enchantments around it, you could, you would always win the game if you resolved enigmatic. And the, the, the thing that you had to work on was what happens when you don't draw enigmatic? How do you win the game then? Uh, how do you prolong the game so that you have a chance of winning when enigmatic resolves? Um, uh, we got there eventually. It took some time. Well, and we managed to get there, and it was one of the funniest, de funniest decks. Not funniest, also funny, likely because it's playing omens. I mean, both we're playing. Omen of the Force is a great card. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I just love that deck. Yeah. But sadly, the Lurus Band happened. The deck took a heavy hit from it. And four color is four color. Yeah. But Davius did not keep up on the brewing. Yeah. 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 What came after Enigmatic? Ugh. I mean, <laughs> not the thing that you would think came next, but um, I, <laughs> I, uh, I 5 0'd. With a with a lot of Kiki Jiki boos. Oh, you are playing the Bring to Light Kiki wheels. That's right. So yeah, I was playing a lot of Bring to yeah. Light with Kiki Jiki rather than Cotter Calling. Um, yeah. I also 5 would with a list with like no tutor spells. I had Imperial Recruiter instead. So that was kind of sweet. Um, I also got a 5-0 with a five color Zer the Enchanter deck that ran Blood Moon. Um, so that was sweet. Um, I was probably my, f it's, it's in my top two favorite ever five O's because like, it just shouldn't have happened. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so here we have the deck list, everybody. Decks contain band cards, Lurus of the Dream Den, and the list goes. Four birds, two hierarchs, one brain maggot, <laughs> one Sithis, one voice, six walls, four of blossoms, two of omens, an idol of rhetoric, a poor kitty boy that was banned, a magus, a reflector mage, three skyclaves, one omnath, and of course, four of the best four drop, which is not omnath, it's Sur the Enchanter. Yeah. Yeah. That for everybody that has no idea what Sur is, which I didn't until I met Davius, because Davius is in love with Sur the Enchanter, the first build of Enigmatic was a soft prison shell with Sur the Enchanter, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so um, the thing that kind of like glued this deck together was Eldritch Evolution. So I could feasibly play a wall on turn two and then Evo it into Zer on turn three and then attack. And again, Zer the Enchanter is one of these cards that, okay, I mean, it's pretty awful right now. Like, I've tried it since and you just can't play it anymore. Like, but if your opponent doesn't resolve it, it's going to single-handedly win the game in one or two attacks. Yeah, every time. Um, if you build the deck right. Like, if you yeah. if you have the right enchantments. I mean, at the time that I 5-0'd, I played Solitary Confinement so that you could, like, lock, lock decks like Burn out of the, de- out of the game. The Tension Sphere, Blood Moon, Sterling Grove, Assault Formation... <laughs> yeah. Now, enlighten me in the Assault Formation. Is that because you have six walls? Uh, no, um... Weirdly, no. Um, it's so that Zer the Enchanter can actually kill people. So <laughs> Zer's a one for, and sometimes it's just like it's just and like again, if you have Birds of Paradise and Zer the Enchanter, you just turn them both sideways, um, and then pay three. You might even be able to pay six, and then all of a sudden you're like in for eight in the air, and that can finish a lot of decks off. So yeah, um, so, like most enchantments in modern are just like lock pieces. But you actually have to be able to kill your opponent eventually, and that's what the assault <laughs> formation's for. Um, okay. It's a bit annoying having to kill them. It's much better just to play with your food, but uh, yeah, you do have to yeah, you yeah. have to finish them eventually. I'm more in the school of thought that winning with a 1-1 one, one is the best sort of winning. Yes, yeah, exactly. The enigmatic school of thought. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, so I, I had uh, I had the dress down plus Lewis little combo in the deck as well. Mm-hmm. Because that would draw me a card, even if Solitary Confinement was in play. So, and Lewis was tutable from Eldritch Evo, and Just Down was tutable from Zer the Enchanter. So you could like set up this draw engine whilst the opponent can't actually touch you, and it was it, it was pretty janky, but it did work. Yeah, you could even look for Sithis if you have like a solid in the sec- first attack. Look for a Confinement. Second one, look for a Sithis. And make sure you just win the game that way. Yeah, yeah. I didn't win too many games after the 5 to be fair, but uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Is this the deck that was the one five zero into all the old fives? No, no, no. Um, uh, do, we, do we go down that rabbit hole? It was... Um, <laughs> let me send you a link. Um so that you can marvel at my work. So wait, I know, I know what you're gonna show me before you, before I even open it. I'm gonna guess you have a six mana instant in your deck that doesn't cost six. Yes, you are correct. I, I have heard this listen. So this was at the time I met Davius at Brox. He had. So we're talking about March, April, 2020. That's right. Yeah. And the deck list consists of. Four Arboreal, four Devoted Druid, three Stoneforge, three Viziers, four Eternal Windness, two Magus, four Resto Angel, three Kiki. Yeah. Of course, four Court of Calling and four Utopia Sprawl, so you're just guessing, okay, it's like a devoted Kiki shell, sort of two combo showing. But it features three Summoning Trap in the main deck and one in the sideboard. Summoning Trap, six mana instant, Trap. If a creature spell you casted was Counter this turn by a spell or ability and opponent's control, you may play this spell for zero, so you can pay it for free. And you look at the top seven and put a creature into play. Yeah, right. <laughs> so this happened once in my league. Um, it was a post-board game against a blue deck with a count- some v- version of Counterspell. It was before Counterspell was legal, so it would be like Remand or Mana <laughs> League. And I had a hand that was like two lands, two summoning trap, and a voice of resurgence. And I was on the play. And I went, land, go. They went, land, go. 
I went land. I was like, well, if I play this voice with Resurgence now, they won't counter it because they, they don't have counter mana up. So I had to pass the turn. And then they played a second land. And then I untapped, played Voice of Resurgence. They remanded it. And I played two summoning traps for free, hit an Eternal Witness, picked up one of them, picked one back up, played it again for free, hit a Kiki Jiki, copied the Eternal Witness, picked up the trap, played it again for free, didn't find my Vesta Angel Angel, so I hit another Eternal Witness, picked up the summoning trap, played it again for free, hit my Vesta Angel, flicking my Kiki Jiki and killed them. Um, and it was just, it was just brilliant. The hand was completely dysfunctional. And if the voice of resurgence had resolved, I'd have never have won the game. So I had to just wait and pass the turn and it was great. Um, it never happened again since. You had to make sure your spell got countered. Yeah, make sure the spell gets countered. Yeah. That's the key to that deck. Um, and the thing is, right, it sounds awful and it, it is pretty awful, but the Devoted Druid plan actually had some good synergy because if you can make infinite mana, you could just hard cast summoning trap like 10 times. So yeah. you could summoning trap for Eternal Witness, or summoning trap for Resto, summoning trap for Kiki Jiki off of the Devoted Druid combo. And in the same way, you didn't actually have to run a win con because you could Devoted Druid, infinite mana, card get Witness, card get Resto, card get Kiki Jiki. So there was some logic behind the list. It just... Um, it was just <laughs> kind of kind of crazy. Um, really, I just played the deck wanting to face blue decks. Um, but I remember in the league, I think I only played against two blue decks, and the rest of the time I just like drew really hot. Like uh, you know, I beat Schwarm by just killing them on turn three with uh, devoted druid for zero remedies, and it's just like, oh okay, we're somehow getting through this league with these terrible cards. But but at the time, so. I threw the list together, like, very much theory crafted it. And it worked. And I 5 0 the first league, and I hadn't gone into two mans or anything. I just went, bang, 5 0. And then I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is amazing. Let's, like, share it everywhere. Let's see if we can get some interest in it. And then once I got a few eyes on it and then played some more leagues, I went like 2 3, 1 4, 2 3, 1 4, 0 oh, 5. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I... This was. The 5 0 was the exception, not the rule. Yeah. And uh, the deck is awful. And it, every time I get tempted to play it again, I forget that it was awful and do it anyway and lose lots of money <laughs> every time I do. So. Um, uh, but it's one of those rules you just love. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to be doing this again today or tomorrow because it's just like, <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of fun. It's just. You know, especially now counter spells legal, you know, I can I can play loads of things that could get countered, so it'd be great for them. <laughs> you just gotta give your opponent like harmless offering your opponent something like Lavinia and then play an ornithopter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just go full on meme. We play Lavinia, we give it to your opponent and we cast an ornithopter. <laughs> I mean it's it's an option. And then we just go quad summon impact. And just hope it works. Yeah, I think um Spell an ability an opponent control. Yeah, so if I think the really like mental way to do this is like if you're just like completely memeing is chalice to the void, pass it to the opponent, yeah. And then they control the chalice and then and then that counters your spell. So summoning trap is then turned on. That's exactly what you can do with Lavinia. The two mana Lavinia that just counters spells oh, that reduce yeah, yeah. mana. Yeah. Just play a thopter and you're like perfect. Three yeah. card combo so I can enable my fourth card. <laughs> Why yeah. didn't I just but, make six mana like a reasonable human being? Uh, you know, and then your your six mana card that you made cost zero sometimes whiffs and doesn't win you the game anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like playing Giruda. It's, the, it's, it's, the per- <laughs> it's Giruda! <laughs> the perfect combo. We just described Giruda with extra steps. Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> I want to remind everyone, this was also after MH1, so we're, we're talking about a time where Uro and Renan 6 and Astrally were legal, and the Madman is here just firing up on all cylinders without a single MH1 card. Yeah, I, I do have this little uh, bee in my bonnet about the cost of magic, and where possible I try to play cheap. Um, it's become a lot harder, and like I kind of realise that all the cool stuff I want to do needs like 16 fetch lands and a Yorion. So, like, 
Yeah. And it's going to cost me some money to play, but when I can, um, you know, like, so Tameshi, I started off without Teferi, without Renin 6. Um, you know, I tried to, I tried to build cheap first and good second, really. I kind of accept the fact that it's not always possible. And if I yeah. want to play something fun, I'm probably going to have to spend some money nowadays. But um, certainly back on the summoning trap list, if I look at it online, it's 91 ticks. <laughs> so, um, you know, what, 40 of those are the mana base. So, yeah, there's there's not a lot of money in that list. In fact, in the main deck... There's four Utopia Sprawl, three Stoneforge, and two Magus of the Moon, and everything else costs lost less than one dollar online. Oh, really? Outside of the mana base. So, you know, ah, that's always my go-to. Um, again, I'm sure some psychiatrist can tell me why I have an issue with these things, but because uh, uh, there's no real reason, you know, like, I have a rental system. I could, I could have whatever cards I want. I just, I just choose not to I punish myself <laughs> for no reason. Uh, hey ho! I just use rental service, and it's just the best. Yeah, yeah. It's just what keeps me going because I cannot afford four color mid range. Who can right? Like it's um, it's just mental. I just uh... yeah. And the fact the bills keep changing, like. <laughs> Even if I could afford it, it just wouldn't be worth it because it's better to rent than just buying and sell all the cards that I might need. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of my lists, like, like my go-to with, with Modern is to play toolbox decks. So, yeah. you know, the more tutors, the better. Um, I have, like, I have a little... Um, document on my pc of all the five o's and links to those because it's kind of just fun to look at sometimes sometimes it can give me a bit of inspiration <laughs> like if i'm building a new kiki cheeky deck i can load up all the lists and all the different tech that i've used in the past and see if anything you know like gets the juices flowing so to speak so uh and when i look at it it's like okay that my first list i'd bring to like next one had summoners pats the next one uh, Fauna Shaman, then Prime Speak of Anafar. Um, I found a Shaman 5 over a few weeks ago with Bayel. I think the deck was terrible. It's a green white hate pairs, and actually, it was Naya, I think. Yeah, sorry, it splashed red for like a Magus of the Moon. Um, the guy actually beat me in the <laughs> <laughs> I, I played against it before I saw the 5 0. Um, and it inspired me to go build a Fauna Shaman list that wasn't boring. So um, <laughs> his uh, his list was just like a green white, you know, like it's just like hate bears with Fauna Shaman, and I was just like, yeah. oh, you you haven't touched the sides of what Fauna Shaman can do. Let's uh, let's see what you else. You have no root in here. Yeah, so I um, I five would with Fauna Shaman more than once actually, but um, it was a, a, obviously a kiki jiki list. And I'm going back to April 2019 when I had my 5 0 with <laughs> Fauna Shaman. So I'm looking at your first ever result on MTG Goldfish. Do you know what it is? Uh, amulet? It's Amulet with Seaman Spirit Guide, High Mine, and Summer Blue. So. Yes. Original Amulet. Yeah, so I was original Amulet. Um, I was fairly early on that list. Um, very early, in fact. And then when Amulet got banned, I was the first person to 5 -0. So when Summer Bloom got banned, I was the first person to 5 -0 after that. So that was my first sort of like... First time that I had created something in 5 -0. That was my first thing that wasn't just like a net deck exercise. Okay. I mean, the first 5 -0 that I got with Amulet with like Hive Mind and things like that, um, when Summer Bloom was legal... 23 August 2016. That was still quite early on, but there were other people working on it and I wasn't the first to po post a 5-0. So I hadn't necessarily net debt. I'd worked a lot on the list, but there was a lot of other contributors as well. Whereas yeah. with the 5-0 after the ban, I was... No, no, but this is after the Summer Bloom ban. Oh, okay. Oh, you're looking at that list. This is the first list post-Summer Bloom. Right. 2016. Yeah, this list is fantastically bad. So... It, you have a main deck spell piercing Amulet Titan. Yeah. So, 
And I'll explain why, because it's not completely mental, but it's quite mental. And one extra in the sideboard? Oh, uh, my sideboard is like 12 one offs because I, um, at the time, I was getting infinite 4 ones. I was just getting 4 1, 4 1, 4 1, 4 1. And I was keeping a track of what my losses were. And the list was just like, it was just different deck every single day. I was getting a different <laughs> loss. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to throw a sideboard together. Attack everything. I'm just going to throw a sideboard together that like can beat those decks. So I think the day before my 5-0, I'd lost to Ad Nauseam. Um, so then all of a sudden I was running a Spell Pierce. I'd lost to Infect, so I had like Sudden Shock, Spell Sky, and Melora. And Melira. Yeah. yeah, that's just hating on Infect as much as you can Sudden Shock. And it was a terrible matchup to be fair as well. Um but yeah, like I just ran just all sorts of random garbage. Um, but what actually, what actually happened with the spell pierce in the main deck? The old Summer Bloom list ran two packs of negation, and not very quickly. But I eventually figured out that the second pact of negation was actually really bad because you weren't as quick as you used to be, so you couldn't play this pact of negation as early. You couldn't. You couldn't use it on turn two to protect your combo turn because you didn't have a turn two combo. So yeah. so you couldn't use it, but actually you still wanted some early interaction and you still wanted something that could protect your combo when the opportunity arose. And you also wanted to be able to tutor up that interaction sometimes. So I wanted one pact of negation that I could chew up and I wanted another piece of interaction for when... I naturally drew it, and that's how I ended up on a spell pierce because it doesn't cost five. So yeah, of course. Um, and this was before you have the option to even think about Veil of Summer. So um, <laughs> not that I would have won that main deck. I would I'd have stuck with a spell pierce. Um, and Hive Mind again, like that was a two of in the old list, and I, I was having to trim back on on these high casting cost cards because it wasn't as easy to make six mana anymore because Summer Bloom had gone. Um, Sakura Tribe Scout was the replacement for Summer Bloom, but it wasn't very good because it kept dying to bolt. And you even still had Simeon Spirit Guide, which got cut by the next build. Like, a few months later, your next 5-0 doesn't have Simeon Spirit Guide. Yeah, I, I can't really remember the logic of it, um, other than, you know, like, if your Sakura Tribe Scout dies, the Spirit Guide helps you get there a turn earlier. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Uh, you know, I've, I've got a main deck Hornet Queen. It's, it was, <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd lost a Jund the day, like two days before, so I tried the Hornet Queen main deck, and I believe on that 5 0, and I'm going back to like 2016, so I could be completely wrong, but I believe I sideboarded <laughs> it out on all five matches because the matchups didn't line up with Hornet Queen, but they did line up with the Spell Pierce, so, you know, like, it's just. <laughs> I, I, I knew when I 5 0'd that that was probably the worst list I'd run for about 10 leagues, but I was trying to. I was just trying different things to try and find a way to get the result that I wanted. And I just ran hot that day. And that, that can happen sometimes. Sometimes you're just going to run hot and you're going to win. Especially with combo decks that can kill on turn three, you know, like, or even turn two. Like, you know, this could have a double amulet hand or whatever. But yeah, um, it was just one of those really weird situations where the list wasn't refined at all and there was no one working on it except me so i just threw all sorts of jank into the main deck and the sideboard so that i could work out whether they worked or not and uh that's that's what we did and um yeah eventually i got the 5-0 but it's it's with the weirdest looking list ever uh, but that was that was one that i was pretty proud of I mean, it's the first 5 without Summer Bloom, and it just has some insane stuff. The one of Fitting Needle just makes me try to think like, oh, Ursa Saga, and I'm like, wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. What are the modern and popper dailies? This is like a step of MDGO I don't know about. Oh, uh, this is like, um, I kind of wish those went on my MTG Goldfish because I was just brewing, and I didn't realize that that format was kind of like solved. So I was playing this Penny Dreadful and it would register all my decks, even though I was going like 0-2 drop, 0-1 drop, 3-2. <laughs> and then all the lists are posted, and it's like, well, I don't want them there. <laughs> I don't want this here. It's a scourge on my name, those bad lists. Um, okay, okay. They just happen to be there. Yeah. And with that being said, 
why don't you tell us a bit about how this evolved into what became one of the known combos of the format? About a bit about how Tameshi got started. Yeah, okay, so Tameshi I can't remember where I read it, but someone had pointed out that Tameshi and Lotus Bloom work really well together. And straight away my go to was okay, well, Pump Then Wine used to run Lotus Bloom in Amulet. And I was like, okay, so Lotus Bloom is a card that we're going to want to run with Tameshi. Yeah. But how can we make Lotus Bloom good when you don't have Tameshi? And how can you make the deck work when you don't have Tameshi? And I was like, well, Amulet could be the answer to that. But then one of my favorite cards is Wargate. And I was like, okay, so if I'm going to play amulet with lotus bloom i probably should just run wargate because it can go get amulet sometimes or lands or whatever so so wargate for anybody that's just a second wargate for anybody that doesn't know x green white and blue so band plus x sorcery sexual library for a permanent card with converted mana cost x or less put it straight into play right so three mana get any land or lotus bloom four mana get a one drop five mana get a two drop etc etc yeah so essentially my plan was Wargate on turn three, turn four, you can either just prime evil titan or you can try and combo a little bit with Tameshi. It was kind of obvious right from the start that Cultivator Colossus worked really well with this combo and that was already in amulet list. So it just like just seemed like a natural shell straight away. So I went and played some like not so many games actually. I was like, okay. This is cool, but I've just made Amulet a lot worse. <laughs> so <laughs> This is like Amulet, but bad. Yeah. Amulet at home. Yeah, Amulet, but um, <laughs> Amulet, but there's some janky combo getting in the way sometimes that never really lined up. Um, you know, if you can make six mana in Amulet, you don't really need you don't really need to be playing Tameshi in a Lotus Bloom and making twelve. You know, like it just doesn't really achieve anything. Just play a Titan and be gone with it. Yeah. So so at that point, I was like, okay, well. What does work here? And I was like, well, okay, so Tameshi works, Wargate works, Cultivator Closser works. Let's cut everything else and just like start from scratch. Um, and I was like, okay, so how do we, if we're making a new deck, so like we're not, we're not focusing on Amulet, we're not focusing on Primeval Titan. If we're making a new deck from scratch, how are we going to make it so that the Tameshi and Lotus Bloom either A, line up well together, or B, are not key to the deck. That's like they're the only two options because you're not going to find the card every single game if you just have four yeah. copies in your deck. The rule of eight. Yeah. So how do we how do we do this? And I kind of already made my mind up that you couldn't just jam them into like a fair game plan, and when you draw them, you'll win, and when you don't, the game will progress and you'll be fine. Like I, I, it just wasn't mm-hmm. going to work like that because there was no shell for that. You know, drawing Lotus Bloom on turn five and then let suspending it, it's just no good. So it's like, right, okay, so the only other option is just to run a load of tutors so that you find you find the cards that you need when you need them you know, and more frequently. So I was already banned because I wanted Wargate. Adami's call is the right colour of mana, so that's perfect. And at that point, I was trying to... F- like flesh it out i must have played like one or two games before i realized that i wanted a way to find lotus bloom off the eladamri's call so that was goblin engineer (laughs) so now i'm four color Um, (laughs) and at this point i actually thought i had a reasonable shell it was so it's four lotus bloom four eladamri's call four wargate four tameshi and three cultivator colossus and i needed a win con at that point the best thing I could think of was Barbara Wigmoss Enraged. <laughs> so the big seven mana discard a land bolt people. Throw lands at your opponent. You're picking up all your lands anyway to do your combo, so you might as well bolt people with your lands. So that's and you can tutor it up with Wargate and Aladamri's call, so it so it made a lot of sense. At that point it was just a case of, okay, this this car works, but how do we how do we um you know, how do we get to turn four? Do we ramp so that we can play the Wargate earlier, the Tameshi earlier? Do we um you know, do we need to run more tutors? Do we need to run things that slow the opponent down? I think the original list I think the original list actually ran four goblin engineers and four Esper Sentinels. I'm looking exactly now at your first five O. 
Right. So, Forrest for Sentinel, four Goblin Engineer, two Prismatic Ending, one Portable Hole as interaction. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot going on, but um, a Portable Hole is something that you can wargate up, so every now and again you'd be facing, like, Relic of Progenitus and you can't beat it, so you'd wargate up a Portable Hole and combo off anyway. So, Portable Hole makes a lot of sense there, but also I was running for Goblin Engineer, so you could, like, Portable Hole of Agavan on turn one, and then on turn two, play an Engineer, and then turn three, you could swap the hole with the Lotus Bloom, and or whatever. You know, like, you could just yeah, do his just, tricks. Do his tricks. It was as personal enough and synergistic enough with the deck to be worth it. Yeah. You're also running a lot of lands. Like, you can see you started with a sort of Primeval Titan Shell. 26 lands for a deck that was to curve out till, four, till turn four. Yeah. Problem with it was that you had to hit four lands on turn four. So... Yeah. You did want the lands. Um, and you didn't have any cantrips or such. No, no. And, I mean, I have one Venom 6 in my first 5 but that was before the mana base was particularly red heavy. It wasn't it wasn't a great mana base for Venom 6, and I didn't own them either. So that was a reason that there wasn't more. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's. you look at the latest decklist, and you're like, mostly four of are like really short, and this just has... Island, Ketia Trio, Motawara, Rust Veil Bridge, Sacred Foundry, Socken Sun, Breeding Pool, Bosatio, Cavern, Forest, Ghost Quarter. Yeah, 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 there's a lot going on in the mana base in this list because, well, mostly because I had space to mess around with the mana a little bit as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. And ag- again, like a lot of these cards get extra value by being Wargate targets, by being Red and Six targets, by being able to pick them back up with Tameshi. So. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of tricks involved. I mean, there's even an artifact land in there. Yeah, the Rust Veil Breach, the yeah, Bodos Breach, and that was so you could sack it to Goblin Engineer. Um, <laughs> you know, like you could just sometimes get a bit grindy and swap an Esper Sentinel with a land, or it's just there's lots of little weird tricks with this list, and unfortunately, yeah. they're not very good. It was better to just go down the streamlined path. Less engineers, essentially. Um, yeah, not only as engineers, but I mean less tricky and more consistent. Yeah, right. Uh, that's that's exactly it. Um, but to be honest, even the list today, um, it's not anywhere near solved. The, the core, there's more cards that are classed as core now, so there's, there's like 54, 55 cards that I wouldn't really mess around with, whereas back then there was maybe 48 cards that I really liked and 12 yeah. that I didn't. Um, but there's not a lot of stuff out there that actually fits in with this game plan. Prismatic Ending doesn't really fit in with a combo deck that's trying to kill you on turn four. It's just a good card. It's just a good card. And, you know, when you're playing Men and Six and Teferi, like, you can you can kind of look like a fair deck and then all of a sudden just kill someone. You could, like, turn one Prismatic yeah. Ending, turn two Ren, turn three Teferi, turn four, Watergate Float, Lotus Bloom, and play Tameshi and kill you. You know, like, and stuff like that is kind of sweet. But... At the same time, and, and and again, the prismatic ending can just be like a necessary evil. You've there are cards that just stop this combo dead, and you need some removal. So it makes sense from that perspective, but it's not exactly core. It doesn't exactly develop your own game plan. It's it's just um, yeah. It's not like Crystal Saddle in Living End, which just ate a main combo. This card also has the versatility of being reactive towards cards. Yeah. That are going to attack you. Like, you're going to use an ending on a turn one Ragavan. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. And the thing, a lot of people, especially when the deck was quite new, would say, well, why play Tameshi over Amulet? That was the big comparison. Why would, you, why would you play this deck over Amulet Titan that can kill on turn two or turn three, is slightly more consistent. It has it has a backup plan of like Urza Saga and Dryads and you know so why would you play Tameshi and quite often I was like well I'm not really sure but my results are really good so there's there's got to be a reason and I think the big reason to play this um other than you know for fun um <laughs> but the, the the big reason to play this over decks like Amulet is that you do have interaction and your setup turn can be something as simple as suspend Lotus Bloom on turn one, kill them on turn four, and that gives you three turns of either setup cards or interactive cards. And and the fact that you can interact with the opponent without slowing your own plan is quite 
quite a big deal. You know, you can, in, in Amulet, you don't have a lot of, you know, if you're playing cards like Endurance or Force of Vigor and hard casting them, it's stopping you from playing cards like Dryad or cards like Azusa. Whereas in this list, it doesn't actually matter because you just suspend your Lotus Bloom and you just wait. Yeah, and you play damage in the turn, you're going to win. Yeah, so you can so you always have this spare mana to play with. So that that's sort of like a a subtle upside, if you will. Okay. Yeah, the fact your combo just needs the three mana and the deck building. Besides that, you just gotta get there. Right. Yeah, and that's why Teferi was a big improvement. And to be honest, I was very stubborn, and I should have played that really early on. And I had a lot of people tell me to play it, and I ignored them. Um, but Teferi <laughs> is a big improvement because. Quite often you don't have a lot to do on turn three anyway, and the fact that Teferi guarantees that your turn four comes off is like, yeah, it's just too good. Yeah. It's too good to turn away, and it's also interactive, so. I think my only losses to Tameshi have been exactly that. The, the games where I just don't have an answer to a turn three Teferi, like, immediately, and they're able to just come on me out turn four because I either spent all my turn dealing with Teferi, or I couldn't deal with the Teferi because I just had the creature removal. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, so it's fair, it's fair, it's a big game. Defense Grid is actually really good as well. I can't remember who suggested that, but that was pretty ingenious, to be honest. So the latest deck list looks something more close to one Golden Engineer, four Tameshi, two, two or three Cultivator Colossus, three Renan Six, four Teferi, two Prismatic Endings, Traverse, Celadam Riscol, Finale, Wargate, Lotus Bloom, alongside 23, 24 lands. Half the deck looks close to like a mid-range shell alongside the combo. Yeah. And then you have some beautiful one-offs such as Colossal Sky Turtle to look with the Ladam Riscoll. Yeah. One shredded sales that please sell me on. Yeah, I can't. I um <laughs> <laughs> I buy vote by accident with that card. Um I was actually running what's the green card? Dissenters call or something? It's the one that's that says destroy target artifact or it cycles for one green. The centers, ah, uh, yeah, I know, from Hour of Devastation or yeah. one of those cycles. That's the one. Um, and the idea of running all these one-offs was like, okay, so I want interaction, but right, there's no one piece of interaction that solves all your problems, right? So you can't just run Lightning Bolt because it won't deal with opponents' counter spells. You can't just run Spell Pierce because it won't deal with people's Ragavans. You can't deal, just run... You know, prismatic ending because it misses stuff. Um, so I was looking for cards that cycle. So I, I ran Relic of Progenitus. The Center's Deliverance was the first one. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Um, and instead of going for Wield, like a reasonable human being, yeah, you decided MH1 Draft Staple Shredded... Sorry, Ikoria Draft Staple Shredded Sales... Yeah. Choose one instant, destroy the artifact, or deal for the Master Creator with flying that cycles for two was the best choice. Yeah, and I don't know how I five out with that in my list, but I did. Um <laughs> I do love the fact that your first deck list in modern and your final deck list in modern both sport a one of spell boots in the main deck. <laughs> they do, they do. That card does turn up from time to time in my deck list. <laughs> um it is so I'm kind of known for it at this stage. Um <laughs> You also have a principle, I named it the Minimus Principle, which is you can always cut a land for a Brennan 6. Yeah, that, that, yeah. The first Brennan 6 is always better than your last land, and that's something you do in every single deck list. A lot of the time you will have one Brennan 6 and just stream a land. Yeah, right. So I think um, the first deck list had 26 lands, one running 6. This one has 24 lands, three running 6. So Exactly. It's like I just cut two lands and added two run. Yeah, that's like my catchphrase is that like the last land is always worse than the first Ren and Six. So we just play Ren and Six. You you have to have enough lands to get to two mana and then Ren and Six is better than all your the rest of your lands. So that's pretty much uh, how I build most of my decks now. Um but yeah, I was, I was just looking for I was just looking for interaction that cycled. So Relic of Progenitus and Shredding Sales were in at that point, but then they're not anymore. They they're gone. Yeah. Like, the last result I see from the deck is from Bob49, who Bob is an amazing player, tends to play always combo decks. Yeah. And his list doesn't look that dissimilar from yours. Like, just instead of the random one-offs, 25 lands, two Arboreal Grazer, one Omnath, and one Sekula Tribelder. Yeah. The rest is exactly the same. Like, the core of the deck 
The Seven Planes Walkers, the Eleven Sorceries, like 65, 70 of all of the cards seem like they are already set. Yeah, and Sakurai Builder was something I was running for a long time. I was a fan of that card. It blocks and it ramps, and the deck actually wants lands. It doesn't just want, like, Birds of Paradise mana. It does actually want lands, so... Hmm. Um, Although I am back on Birds of Paradise, but that's, that's another story altogether. But um, <clears throat> yeah, Sukkot Tribal is pretty good, but you just can't run too many because you don't want to run too many basics. Um, yeah. I mean, my current list, um, I think I have two birds. Yeah, two birds. I've tried a Seal of Fire in the main as well as a Seal of Removal. Um, okay. For Wargate? Yeah, a little bit. Plus Tameshi. And Tameshi. And it, it's sort of like another win con. So... If my, I'm on one finale of Devastation, but if that gets removed with like a Ragavan trigger, um, or like Leyline of the Void plus Thoughtseize, I kind of don't have a win con anymore. Um, whereas Seal of Fire, it actually is a win con. I'm not actually sure the deck needs win cons. If you combo off and have like two huge cultivators, a handful of spells and a load of mana, you can pretty much lock people out. You know, you could go like to fairy, bounce your thing, prismatic ending away your stuff. Um, Nasif was playing a one of football creator as exactly that, which is like a false wing con, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, I think that card's rubbish, honestly. Uh, Gabriel Nasif popularized that, and his reasoning was that, like, Finale of Devastation isn't very good, so let's play a win con that's not Finale of Devastation. And I think that's just wrong, because sometimes Finale of Devastation finds you a Tameshi. It's not the best tutor for it. You know, like, Eladami's Call is better. Wild Gate's better because it finds Lotus Bloom. But, like, Finale sometimes is your setup card. It's not always your win con. Yeah. It works in both ways, and that's why I prefer it as well. And that's kind of why the Sky Turtle's in here now. Is that if I use my Finale early, I can use the... Eternal Witness mode on Sky Turtle. Okay. To pick up Finale so that I still have a win con. But also, every now and again, Turtle. I've done this a couple of times. In fact, my very first game with Sky Turtle, I Eladam was called up the Sky Turtle and bounced a Primeval Titan in response to a Slayer's Stronghold activation. <laughs> and they'd pack for that Primeval Titan and they died on their upkeep. So Beautiful. That's perfect. So the Sky Turtle's done that twice for me. So, like, every time that happens, you're like, well, I'm going to have to run the Sky Turtle for a bit longer. Um, I mean, Doomwake is also used to run it, so I think, like, there's some love for the Sky Turtle in general, and I think just having that sort of effect via Adam Call is great. Right, exactly. I, I, I'm right back and forward on whether I should run the Sky Clave Apparition just for that same reason. I had um, Raising Bower for a while. I've tried all sorts. Um, but you do kind of want a little bit of interaction off of your Eldar Mace call if you can. Yeah, not always go for the combo. You also had a leash with four Ragavan, which was just going on the complete opposite side of plans. The thing with Ragavan is two things. Like, if it died, you didn't really care because you wanted Tameshi to live. So that was like one thing. And then also the treasures would sack to the goblin engineer so that was a nice upside um and also the extra mana is just never a bad thing in a deck like this um but the the downside was like trying to get it to connect in a deck with very little removal so sometimes it's just a one mana two one <laughs> but it's just not very good yeah i don't think you have enough removal to make sure ragavan will ever connect yeah yeah pretty much um <laughs> it, it was decent T to be honest if it didn't stretch the mana base so much, I would probably still be running it. But getting red on one and then needing green and white on two is just... And then blue on three. Yeah. It's just awful. The deck is 99% banned slash Brennan 6 and the one of Goblin Engineer, and it seems better to keep it that way. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't have access to stuff like Abundant Gross to Fix and such. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, for those that haven't played the deck, it's actually quite interesting on some of the combo turns, and it's quite... It's quite fun trying to navigate a way to be able to go off. And the deck is, I think, worse today than it was a month ago, maybe two months ago. Um, I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe a meta shift, maybe people understanding how to beat it a bit easier. I think that happened a lot because you got a lot of free wins 
out of people having no idea how to face your eggs. Like I have seen, I have seen Nassif win games where opponents just had their removal and didn't know what to use it or stuff like that that people just don't realize because they have never faced an egg. Yeah, that's it. And he, you did get a lot of free wins, um, and yeah. there's less of them now. Um, so. But I still think the deck's competitive, you know. I haven't 5-0'd for a while, but I haven't played much recently. But um, I think I would expect a 3-2 more frequently than 4-1. So, that you know, that's kind of where I think it sits at the minute. So, sort of like, you know, a competent pilot would hit sort of 60-65% win rate, whereas before I was 65-70, 70, 75% at one point. So, you know, it's it's not tier 1. Like, let's put it that way. It's definitely not. Yeah. Even in a in a good pilot's hand, it's it's not gonna feel like a tier one deck. I mean, you wouldn't play it if it was a tier one deck, right? I did for a little that's bit. That's the thing. Yeah, I know. That's true. That is true. Um, you will play it for a few days and then be like, no, no, this is too good for me. What what can I ruin now? <laughs> How many spillware spillware glyph can I play today? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I have drifted away from Tameshi a little bit. The the community grew really quickly. The Discord like. It's really good. Um, there's a lot of good people in there. There's a lot of people testing and things like that. And then the deck got a bit more solved and the Discord quietened down a little bit. But honestly, like, it's there as a good reference point. There's some people that know their stuff in there. Um, and at that point, like, I kind of feel like my work is done. You know, we've we've made a deck. We've got people interested in it. Um, let's, let's try and do something new. <laughs> You just gotta show the concept that works, and from there you can let the eyes of everybody else get get in charge of it. But other people can, you know, improve the list because, as we know, I'm not very good at tuning list lists. I'm just, I'm just someone who jams <laughs> infinite games. Eventually, you're gonna, uh, eventually you're gonna stumble on a list that can run hot and get a fiver. So, uh, yeah, let other people make it good. <laughs> okay, yeah, just. Get get rid of it. That's it. And now, what are you working on nowadays, Davius? What has gone into the mind of the man after Tameshi, or is it just a small break? I know it's never it's never a proper break. I'm always looking. Um, <laughs> this was a failed experiment. I should I'll I'll start start from the top there. This didn't work at all. But I was uh, I saw uh, MCG Goldfish Seth play. Meeting of the Five in Standard, which is the okay. eight mana exile the top ten cards of your library. You may cast spells that are exactly three colors from among them this turn, and, yeah. and you add ten mana. And so I tried brewing around that card <laughs> in Modern, <laughs> which is like... A really tough idea. It's a really bad idea, but also... I did get to play some nickel boluses for free and win a few games. So, I, you know, I, I had some fun with it. It was pretty bad. Um, I think I went like 2-3 in a league with it, so... Could have been worse. Could have been the beautiful and legendary 05. There's a card called Trace of Abundance, which is two mana. And it's green and then it's red or white. Yeah, the weird utopia spell with hexproof, right? Yeah, the land gets hexproof, and then you have like a glorified, uh, it's fertile ground, but like utopia spell basically. But okay, but that card ramps, which is ideal in a deck trying to cast an eight mana spell. But also, it's a three mana spell that only costs two. So when you played Meeting of the Five, quite often you would get a free trace of abund- abundance that you just you know like. You couldn't use all 10 mana, but you could use your Trace of Abundance and you get just like some free value out of that card. So, so yeah, I, I, it did some, it did some fun stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, I have two, two lists that I'm kind of interested in playing soon. One of them uses Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. Yeah. Fable has been getting the spotlight lately. Everybody's on Fable. Yeah, but everyone's doing it wrong. So, um, <laughs> uh, tell us the way. Tell us the mirror breaker of way. Tell us the new fable. So, time stream navigator is the card that you need to run with with your fa- no, 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 with your fable of the mirror breaker. So, so time stream navigator is a two mana one one with ascend, and you need the city's blessing. So, you need ten permanents in play, which is relatively easy to do, and then. Yeah. 
your Fable the Mirror Breaker copies your Time Stream Navigator, and then you activate your your copy, which is far mana, tuck the copy onto the bottom of your library, e.g. blow it up, uh, take an extra turn. And then you untap, and then you copy your Time Stream Navigator again. And you could do that on a loop to have infinite turns, draw your deck, kill your opponent, however, however you want, really. People can't see the pain in my face. <laughs> they, they can't. I can't. I'm enjoying you it. You can, and, and you're just loving it. And people can see the pain in my face and what I'm hearing. Are you also running real Kiki Shiki? So, I this, yeah, this, so this started out as just something I was splashing into a Kiki Jiki list. And instead, I thought, well, no, let's just... Took over the whole concept. <laughs> let's just like... Let's just like commit to it. So I cut all the Kiki Jikis and Vesta Angel Angels and just stuck to Fable of the Mirror Breaker in Time Stream Navigator in a similar shell to what I would normally run. So I have like Adamus Call, um, I have Solitude, Omnath, Ephemerate, Ice Fang, Cortals, Teferi, Venom Six, Guy Clave, Witness, those kind of things. Please send me that list. I'll screenshot it for you because I haven't even written it down anywhere. It's just um, it's uh, the time stream navigator is the one of that I can tutor up. So I'm not like I'm not like crippling myself by playing a really bad, you know, a really bad individual card. I'm playing a really good individual card in Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And if you end up with a Kiki Shiki token, you get a seven mana win the game. Uh, six, six mana. No, no, five, five mana. One to tap it for to activate. I guess two if we haven't got the time stream in play yet. Yeah, that means so, I mean, yeah, just yeah. you can tutor that and just like you know you're gonna tap with a fable and you just go for the win. Yeah, that's it. And I think the deck can play a fair mad game and not need the time stream navigator. So fable has been really annoying copying ETB creatures. Like just having a wall of women and a fable, and let's not even talk about solitude plus fable can really take a hold of the game all of a sudden. Yeah, and. I didn't realize how cool it was with um, even Ephemerate. So you have the Fable in play, yeah. but it has to sit a turn, and the opponent tries to remove it, and you Ephemerate it, and it, and it flips and makes a 2-2. Two -two. You get a 2-2, two -two and then you and, it and then again the 2-3. Yeah. All happens really quickly. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's a pretty bonkers card. Um, so I want to give that a go, and then I'm trying to play a... Um, a Fauna Shaman list that... So, how do I explain Fauna Shaman? <laughs> what am I doing here? So, I was... I registered, Why? I, I registered Fauna Shaman in a league with a kind of off-the-wall list. And I faced Living End, and I had Kiki Jiki in my hand and Fauna Shaman in play. And I just end-stepped, discarded the Kiki Jiki to the Fauna Shaman. I looked through my deck, I was like, wait a sec. I'm going to pick up Restoration Angel. So I did. And then my opponent went to play a Living End, and I went, oh, I'll discard my Restoration Angel <laughs> to my Fauna Shaman, and I'll just pick up something that doesn't matter at all, because now I have Infinite Angels. Yeah. Um, so then the next game, my opponent was like, oh, I'm not going to let him do that. I'm not going to... I'm not going to play... Uh, living end while well, since a Kiki Jiki and a Vesta Angel in the bin. So this time I discarded my Kiki Jiki and they couldn't live an end. So then I discarded my Vesta Angel Vesto Angel and but they weren't ever gonna play Living End. So I searched up Karmic Guide. And then I played my Karmic Guide, got back my Kiki Jiki, copied my <laughs> Karmic Guide and got back my Vesta Angel and I killed them. And I was like, okay, so <laughs> I'm going to do this, want it or not. So I was just like, okay, so Fauna Shaman is reasonable against Living End, so that's cool. And then the more I looked at it, I was like, okay, so Kiki Jiki, Kamek Guide, Resto Angel, or Felidar Guardian, whichever you fancy. Well, those those sound like cards you would run in Vivian of the Hunt, on the Hunt, it's kind of pod deck. So that's what I've done. I've just made a 60 card uh, Fauna Shaman list that runs like Arbor Elf, Birds, Utopia Sprawl, and then Plain Bound, Accomplice, Vivian on the Hunt, and still the whole Fire Dog Guardian, Karmic Guide, Kiki Jiki. So you can combo, you can combo through like three or four different routes and not interact very much at all, essentially. 
but it's just kind of like the Fauna Shaman win con is the same as the Vivian win con. So, and you can even use Fauna Shaman to find plane bound accomplice if you want. So it's pretty sweet. Hmm. Just feature all the combos together. I, I think the nut, like not the nut jar, but like, like the second nuts is to just go turn one Arbor Elf, turn two Utopia Spall, play a Fauna Shaman, and then turn three, you can discard a creature to find plane bound accomplice, play it and flash in Vivian on the hunt. So you don't have to have the plane bound in your hand to be able to kill them pretty early on. <laughs> and you can still just get the win. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is going to be any good, but it just seems fun. So <laughs> this is this is me just being a little bit stupid. <laughs> the rest of it was really sensible, you see. And um, <laughs> you have been extremely sensible yet. That's why I'm scared. Like I know something else is coming. Yeah. So the sideboard is summoning trap. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if I'm you just go and hold yourself right you had to play the trap well I was like well I could play Veil of Summer but that's a good card um, I'm already playing a lot of good cards but I'm already playing Eternal Witness Resto Angel and Kiki Jiki I might as well uh, might as well put my summoning traps in the sideboard so um, let's hope someone counters my spell and I run really hot that's uh <laughs> For the flashbacks of that first 5-0 with the unplayable deck. Yeah, exactly. So that's something I'm going to test out soon. Um, what else have I got here? There's, there's a few little lists going around. Oh, that was... I'm not even going to share that. That was just ridiculous. I, that's almost <laughs> embarrassing. I, I, even I have a limit. But um, yeah. Um, I didn't realize Final Parting was a card. I think MTG Goldfish featured that one recently, where you search library for two cards, put one in your hand and the other in the graveyard. And they were using Urborg and Cabal Coffers to make seven mana, play Final Parting, put Emrakul in the bin, and Gorios it all in one swift movement, which was kind of cool. But it was mono black, and I was like, well, that's boring. So I thought I would try Final Parting in a Bring to Light list. <laughs> so. That is, um, that's on my to-do list as well. So that, that list has Omnath, <laughs> it has has Teferi, has Renin Six, has Utopia's Pauls, has... This all can, this is just listen, right? The guy complaining about the mono black deck because he's playing a black black spell just said it has Omnath. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So so I've I decided to try and make it into a Bring to Light deck that uses, you know, you can have Valky, you can have... What else have I got here that looks cool? Culling Ritual is a pretty good card. Um, it's a good bring to light target. I have <laughs> a Seeker, God of the Trees. So you can pay five with bring to light, get a Seeker and play the backside, which says beginning of your upkeep, yeah. reveal cards from the top of your library until you hit a creature or a plane as well. I could put that card into play. And I have a main deck, Emrakul. So there's, you know, there's a chance. There's a chance you can run really hot. I mean, as long as you don't hit the Brennan Six and the Fetis, maybe you'll just hit an Emrakul. Well, yeah, but I do also have Omnath and a few other rubbish cards. J Flippy Jace. <laughs> Flippy Jace is in there. I've also got a Grizzle no, Brand. No, 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 no Flippy Chase. No Breeze Priority. Why? Have mercy on your soul. It's not a good card. <laughs> it's not even a fun card. It's a dumb card. It's Yeah, but I'm running for Goya's Vengeance, so I kind of felt like I had to. Like, you know, Goya's Vengeance and Flippy Jace are kind of meant to be together, aren't they? Like, they're just meant to be. They're good together. So, okay. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure this list will be terrible. I've got four prismatic endings and yeah, the, the usual the usual stuff was, uh, uh, you know, four prismatic endings, three men and six, four to fairy, four bring to light, and an Omnath and a Valky. Like, that's how I start all my brews and then I work out, okay, what do I want to bring to light for this week? <laughs> um, and yeah, that's where I've ended. I'm going to play bring to light. What would I tutor today? Yeah, what should I tutor today? Because um, yeah, I've, uh, I've even run bring to light into my she right back at the beginning. So, because um, you can bring to light for Wargate to get Lotus Bloom, which is like, it's, it's, it's not horrendous, you know. It is, it's, but it's possible at least. It's like a, it's just like a thing, you know. Like, also, it gives you a slightly fair access in the because a lot of I haven't casted a Valky in like six months, but I'm still sure getting a Valky into play on turn three four is devastating. It's still pretty good. 
like like even in Tameshi, like if you play Eladamri's call and then play Tameshi, that's a, that's a five mana play. Bring to light for Tameshi is also a five mana play. So it's kind of yeah. like it's all it's all reasonable ish. Um, it's like better finale. Yeah, kind of, but it doesn't kill anyone, so it's kind of worse finale. But like you know, <laughs> it's a, it's it's a similar card. Um, yeah, you know if if you just want to spice up spice up your magic experience you can try something to like <laughs> uh, it's the best way to spice to spice your deck just play ring to light in any deck that's it that's it so i mean i guess at this point people are getting a feel for what i'm what i'm doing with most of my debt lists um <laughs> but yeah i'm sure people know yeah um <laughs> But no, to be fair, I don't. I don't really have anything, any, any huge projects that I'm on with at the minute. I kind of haven't found my inspiration just yet. So I'm, I'm kind of waiting for something to pop up. Maybe a new, a new card that says search your library. That's kind of the key. <laughs> um, but uh, just something. It's it's really it is really tough to brew at the minute because uh, other decks are just playing cards at such a high power level that. If you're trying to rely on synergy, it's um, you're kind of starting from behind, right, right from the off. Whereas if you if you can play individually good cards, then you've much better chance of winning. And and the best way to yeah. do that's just like four color. Um, so yeah, it's really difficult to compete with four color when you are playing. You know, like you know, like if you're playing bring to light and Omnath and Teferis and Renin Sixties, it's like okay, well. I'm playing the good. I'm playing some of the good cards from Four Color, and now I'm playing some bad cards that I want to play for fun. And I, I mean, Wusa has been having some results. He got like a double five all this week with Niv, but that's because it crashes more tide and Four Color. Like right. Niv is just bigger Four Color. Yeah. And it's and then you get into the point like, how do you build a fair deck that's as big as Niv or as flexible as Four Color, and you just end up in that spot where you're like, I can't. Right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, so you know, like my 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 favorite deck that I've played pretty much ever is the Bring to Light Kiki Jiki deck. I I I've always loved playing yeah. that. It had Eldritch Evo in it as well. Like it just did some big stuff sometimes, but it just doesn't cut it anymore. Unfortunately, it just doesn't. It's like my love for the Secret Story Color Neo from deck. I could never get to work. <laughs> yeah. I just love that deck, and I just can't. Couldn't you know? You're just like, why? Why can't you better be like ten percent better? I don't need that much more. No, exactly. Like you know, at the minute I'm kind of. Uh, I'll always just like theory craft up some lists, and someday I'll take it for a spin and see if I like it. But um, at the minute, it's it is pretty hard to brew and. Um, I mean, everyone has their own opinion on like the state of modern and uh, modern horizons two and all this kind of stuff. And I, I don't really know where I sit with that. I don't know whether I think bannings are the answer or what or what I think really. But what I do know is I am struggling to find debt lists that are uh, able to keep up. So you know, I, I certainly certainly don't enjoy modern as much today as I did a year ago. But then again, I've had a pretty a pretty hot run on Tameshi, so you know I'm still here. I'm still playing. I, I'm not complaining loudly, um, <laughs> but uh, I might be complaining in silence. But at least I don't complain loudly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but no, I, I. It is hard work at the minute um, because realistically, you should just start all your brews with all the good cards from MH2, and then figure out what you want to do from there. Um, yeah, like I have been killing with a Sorius Blink, and the thing is. You have no idea how useful it's having a solitude as a way to close games. Yeah. Like, just because it's a 3 2, it's huge compared to anything else. Like, I would never play this deck without four solitudes. It's just insane. Yeah, yeah. I really like your uh, focal list with the four traverse, the Oven World. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, but like, most of my decks these days will. Are featuring one of Traverse. Yeah, I've been on one of tra- uh On the same principle that. The first traverse, the Ulven world is better than the last land. That's the, <laughs> that, it's like the Renan Six theory. Traverse is the new Renan Six. Yeah. It's better than your last land. It is. So, and especially since it costs one, like, you don't actually need two lands for this card to be good. You only need one land. Exactly. I, I mean, again, in Tameshi, like, 
I can't cut too many lands, but I don't mind playing Traverse on turn one and finding a basic. Like, that's fine. It's the same that happened with 4C. You're just not doing anything turn one generally, so... And if you are, you can just go turn one, your removal into turn two, Still play the land plus something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, like, it's basically free, but maybe one in 10 matches, like one in 30 games, something like that. You rip Traverse off the top with four card types in the bin, search up to Meshi and kill your opponent. You know, like, every now and again, yep. it's the best card in your deck. <laughs> Not very often, but it's free, you know, so... Uh, any creature deck yeah. should just run Traverse, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, as long... I don't know if any, but, like, four colors require adding four Mishra's Bubble and some setup, but as long as you can consistently, or at least with some degree of consistency, achieve the Lidium, yeah. Traverse is amazing. Like, and Tameshi has enchantments, artifacts, creatures, planeswalkers, sorceries, instants, and lands, so it has literally all the types. It has, it has all of them. And like, even Lotus Bloom like, just finds its way in there quite nicely as well. So, um, <laughs> exactly. Like, like, you know, like, look at a deck like Yorgamoth, for example. I don't think they've bothered with Traverse, but they have Eldritch Evo, which is a sorcery, Cordoclone, that's an instant, Grist, which is a planeswalker that mills cards. They have creatures, they have lands. So, like, without even any effort whatsoever, there's five card types in the list. It doesn't necessarily mean Traverse would be turned on too often, but, like, it seems kind of free. It seems like the kind of thing that they should probably just test as a one-off over a land, you know? Likely. Um, but hey-ho. Yeah, maybe it's just one is the, nine, the number they need. Yeah. At least for testing, for knowing how it works, or just that first three plays and play for Traverse and go insane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, I mean... I have uh, not much else to <laughs> ramble on about, really. I, no, but you had your... I just wanted to hear what you are working on nowadays and see what can I get my noses into. Unfortunately, not a lot. I mean, I'm in love with this Fable build and I might just take it for a spin, but that's because I was looking for an excuse to play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Time st- <laughs> not Time Stream Navigator. No, no, but I can, sell my so- I can sell my soul in order to have a good excuse. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> And with that being said, I think, yeah, that's all we had for today. Thanks so much, Davius, for joining us, giving me the perfect excuse to look into a beautiful amount of decks and see what I'm going to work into for the next few days. Beautiful. Yeah, no, th- thanks for uh, having me on and um, uh, listening to my very uh, disjointed ramblings about brewing. Cause, um... Oh, trust me, between you and me, there was never a point of logic. Like, there was never a streamline. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we, were, we were just like here, 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 and just curves all around yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, thanks. It's, uh, I, do you know what? I, fi- I find the brewing process more interesting than almost playing the decks. The playing. Or, yeah, like, I, I really do. Um, that happens to me in draft. I enjoy drafting more than playing the draft. Yeah, oh, by definitely, a mile. definitely. Um, but I mean, whilst I'm here, I, I'm not really someone who likes to plug a great deal, and I'm and I'm not going to like. No, no, I was going to plug you before we leave, so don't worry, please. Um, if you want to do the honors, I was planning on saying where they can find you literally everywhere. So please be my guest and do so. I guess all I would really say is that, like, if this has been of any interest to anyone and they have some brews or they have some questions like i'm always happy to talk magic so like it's not this isn't like a um you know subscribe to my twitch kind of thing it's just a yes yes it is no no go no, look no. debius minimus on twitch <laughs> go hear him go see his insane rumbles you can find it on the, you can find it on discord and just go see this insane mind play some random builds on Twitch. You're going to find him playing Enigmatic one day, then bring to lighting for Kiki, and someday, maybe next week, copying a mainstream navigator with the third part, with the third part of Fable of the Mirror Breaker and winning the game. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually... That's, that's on the cards and stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so... Uh, but no, re- realistically, um, if people have enjoyed this, like, that's great. You know, that's, that's kind of the point of us doing this. Um... But also, I'm very happy to discuss brewing and discussing my thought process in more detail um, and all that kind of stuff. You know, like I, I enjoy brewing and that's um, kind of what I wanted to get across, really. So, um, no, thank you for uh, letting me. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. And hope everybody enjoyed as well. Go look for Davius on Twitch, Davius Minimus. And hope everybody has a good night. Bye-bye. 
Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, I want you to know more about us latest brews. You can support us via Patreon, which will grant you immediate access to our Discord, where you will find our faithless brewers alongside an army of pine-like players hoping to find their perfect brew. Finally, remember to tune in for our next episode on Sunday, where one of our beloved brewers and members shows us to discuss the card he himself posted for the last monthly project, Mausoleum Secrets. Hope you enjoyed the show and see you next week.